Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dennis Murphy. Um, I work for IBM and Software Group. And today I'm going to talk to you about automating the journey to cloud native um, intelligent networks. So as we look um, at, at the, the modern telecom network platform, the cloud has become integral to, to every telco business transformation strategy. You know, as the world of network modernization evolves, the growing focus is on open, hybrid cloud, you know, compliant architectures so that services can be deployed as needed at the right hybrid location, be it public or private cloud on the right hand side, and at the right network location across across this picture, if you like. You know, and the move to network cloudification means that um, network functions can run on the same cloud as IT and other workloads. And this also means that workloads can be automatically provisioned to run wherever they are best suited, either near the, the end user or you know, so-called edge computing, um, or in the core data centers, if you like. And you know, this evolution um, offers the promise of greatly reduced cost of operation, as well as you know, a new level of flexibility and agility for, for the telcos, allowing them to innovate and deploy new services quickly um, and as cheaply, if you like, as the competition. And this is important because, you know, there's an increasing threat of um, increased competition, right? And this is lowering both revenue and operating margins at a time when all of us consumers, um, our data usage is going up, right? Particularly for, for video trafficking, video traffic, which is, you know, it, it's exploding. So the, the telcos and the CSPs need to quickly and efficiently scale the network capacity to meet these demands in, in a cost effective way. Um, and, you know, we can no longer rely on traditional services to generate the revenue. So this is why we need a modern network that will allow this communication service providers to, to rapidly develop and deploy these new revenue generating services. Um, and that's, that's all about modernizing the network by abstracting those legacy network appliances to a network cloud. And this is all happening right now simultaneously with 5G, the rollout of 5G deployments. And to fully leverage the benefits um, of a modern network, there must be a network and an automation strategy that is underpinned by artificial intelligence. Um, and this is what we'll talk about in, in the coming slides. You know, complex or cloud networking um, and services for large scale de cloud native deployments are the complex things to manage. You know, there's, there's cloud complexity, right? Services need to run across multiple edge, multiple public, multiple private clouds. So it is distributed across that landscape. The networking complexity, right? So the networking between these clouds and intra-networking within the cloud as well, of course. But all the service components need to be designed and maintained across the network. Dynamic services, you know, the, the services are much more dynamic than before. Um, you know, location services, networks can be added, can be deleted, changed, deleted on, on the fly in an autonomous fashion. And this leads to, you know, operational complexity, right? This is, you know, there's more effort up front to, do, to design and test. And it's critically important that we do upfront testing and design of this. Um, in particular, for day two operational use cases, you know, once services are applied in, into production, and you know, there's increasing complexity. And this is heavily increasing as well. So we need to, we need to figure all of that out. And you know, traditional tools, um, you know, they're more manual based and they require static programming, and they're not really suited to this this new modern telco environment, to this new environment that we're looking at. Complex dependencies, you know, they exist across multiple technology layers. You know, if you look at the, the right up and down the disaggregated stack, where we now have open hardware, um, open controllers, open NIC cards, et cetera, right up to the network functions from multiple um, different vendors, um, up to the stack, the design of the network services themselves, you know, that logical network design and stitching across those sites, like I mentioned. So these complex dependencies across all of these multiple technology layers you know, analogy would be like the enterprise edge cloud IT and the networking workloads, they must cooperate across these independent layers and connected locations to deliver that end-to-end -end service. You know, and each layer here is designed and managed independently of the others and delivering a service, if you like, to the layer above. You know, for example, a, an IT application owner might be designing a video surveillance application um, and you know, they need low level layer two, layer three networking details that would be required to deliver that application traffic but that's abstracted from that IT application owner who will work with the network engineer, you know, who can to design the required network design and you know uses orchestration design tooling to design out the networking that that IT service requires. 
you know, so these logical network services then are dynamic. And like we said, they can be added and moved and changed locations. You know, for example, if that video surveillance application was, was sitting on a pod over here and some AI infused um, monitoring suggested that, you know, move it to another pod over here, as we know, pods go up and down quite frequently. That impact and the change of that IT application from here to there has an impact on all the networking service below that, all of the layers up and down the stack. And they need to be managed. That ripple effect across the network needs to be managed um, accordingly. And if we look at this, you know, from a top down point of view, like we said, you know, the network service point of view, you know, what 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 are the questions we need to answer? What where do we put which version of this network function? What existing network functions exist that we need to bind to? Um, when should a network function move from one site, you know, along this this slice here to another site? So that network service changes. All of these changes cause uh, a ripple effect across all of the layers across multiple different cloud locations. You know, and these changes need to be automated to cope with new levels of operational complexity. You know, an example here with this, this slide would be, you know, a 5G network service, you know, can share and create dedicated network functions across many network cloud locations. We can also look at this then from a, um, a you know, a bottoms up point of view, if you like, from a hardware tuning point of view. And, you know, we, we can look at this from the hardware up through the, the, the STN controllers, up through the leaf spine, up through the underlay overlay from that point of view. You know, gone are the hard distinctions from the past, right, between infrastructure, um, between infrastructure network functions and the end-to-end -end services. These are now replaced by a flexible hierarchy of interconnected software services up and down the stack. You know, virtual network functions or cloud-native network functions, VMs and containers, you know, the, all these things now require specific hardware and tuning. You know, things like NIC parameters, things like hypervisor parameters, things like container networking plugins, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these, the, the, the design of the network service and the underlying, you know, the network functions that are composing up that network service put requirements on those layers be below, like we said, and tuning of the specific hardware and tuning of the specific controllers, et cetera, et cetera, which is all important to take into consideration as we do our, our network design. So um, ultimately, all of this is about the move to putting software at the center of the network. You know, the way to really achieve both the innovation gains promised by um, cloud network cloudification and 5G and to maintain operational costs by is by adopting a cloud software culture. And this starts with software management approaches and adapting them, you know, adopting these software management approaches and adapting them for the telco. So, so let's expand on this in a little bit. So on the left hand side here, you know, we talk about a standardized life cycle. You know, a standardized lifecycle model and API allows dynamic assemblies of network functions and applications. This lends itself to lower complexity. You know, everything abiding by this standardized lifecycle model allows you to layer huge amounts of automation on top. You know, all network software function components implement these standard lifecycle models and APIs. Then the engine itself can figure out um, the lifecycle tasks in any complex service required to keep the entire to keep the entire service in an active mode or an active state and doing this without any upfront programming. You know, it's all about making everything look the same. All the components must implement each standard lifecycle transition, then everything looks the same. So it's really about modeling dependencies and relationships. And, you know, it's not about workflows or upfront workflows that try to anticipate every possible state. And then we have the concept in, in cloud native here of this intent engine. So this declarative based approach so the intent engine can use these relationships then, these dependencies and relationships to figure out how to get into the desired state. So this is my design, this is where I need to be, and we can automatically figure out how to get there. You know, it calculates this intent, this engine, it's intent-based, and what we mean by that is that it calculates and executes the minimum set of required actions, considering the actual services topology at this moment in time, to reach the desired state or the design to be state for the target service instance. And this, in this way, we can hide all the underlying service complexity so that you, the service designer, can focus on you know, designing your service and what that service should deliver to your end customer, to us as consumers, um, and not how it should be deployed or implemented at the detailed infrastructure level. Like we mentioned earlier around those, the, the different layers of the stack, you know, these network functions put dependencies on different layers of the, the infrastructure. And then the engine itself, you know, we've got a set of opinionated patterns that can support the healing of broken services and resources, et cetera. And all of this is done, you know, um, you know, things like, you know, it's done in a with process execution plans that can resolve 
uh, placement strategies can resolve any shared resources, uh, things like that. The, the analogy that can be used here is similar to a sat-nav system where a user programs their destination and the sat-nav figures out the best route to get there. Depending on if there's a crash, then it can reroute you automatically. You know, if you're going from Cork to Dublin and um, there's roadblocks or whatever, we figure out the next possible, best possible route to get you to your destination. You know, in the same way, this intent-based solution can be loaded with a set of simple service models and all the operation and processes then required to keep that service optimized are, are in place. And then when we look at the, the cloud-based tool chain, you know, to scale any cloud-based networking program, you know, a unified operations and network engineering model is combined with a set of automation tools that can simplify and automate the complexities of the end-to-end -end life cycle of the network functions themselves and also of the network service. Um, you know, you need to look for a solution that's got inbuilt service behavior testing tools, you know, solutions that allow you to be to fully test the network function, the onboarding cycle, life cycle, fully test the network function to see that it does it what it says in the tin, um, and do all of this in an automated way. You know, traditionally, these tasks were very time consuming with programming, having to reprogram and run all the tests again for say a new version of a network function came from, from the third party. But you know, in a cloud native fashion, in a, in a cloud operating model, you know, an automated test framework allows you to spin up entire dev environments. This is taking advantage of the cloud. You know, install and activate all the network functions and network services on those environments. Add additional test resources, things like you know, traffic generators or metric generators, or you know, and run the service through its entire lifecycle. And these tests then can be part of an automatic, you know, um, continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline. You know, part of ready for service test, if you like. Or the, old, the whole process of upgrading to a, a new version of a network service or patching in a new version of a network function, you know, kicks off that automatic test. It runs through the entire lifecycle, um, check the box, and then you know, performance is all good, security is all good, and you can then automatically, you know, deinstall the service from the test environment and push it to the production environment. So that's what we mean by applying a lot of these cloud native techniques that we have learned from the IT world um, and applying machine enabled automation here with the intent engine. That you know, it's all about these opinionated um, patterns that model dependencies and relationships, and not trying to figure out everything up up front. Let the machine take over and, and figure out the best possible path. So once then we have um, all of that set up, you know, we have now moved our our workloads into production. Um, it's very very important then, you know, for you know, how do we manage or how do we operationalize the, the day two operational use cases. You know, AI, and it's a term used, but AI for network operations is all about the infusion of AI to provide um, operational efficiencies, such as predictive um, alerts, um, outage avoidance, instance reduction, et cetera, et cetera, um, into the network operations. And, and the journey to AI ops has a number of different maturity levels. Um, and if you look down here on the, on the bottom left of the, the kind of the middle of the chart here, you know, it's simplified uh, maturity level. So, you know, noise reduction, deduplication of events, deduplication of alarms. Then we move on to more reactive, you know, real-time insights into what the data trends are, um, correlations, things like that. Then we move on to more of a predictive, um, real-time dynamic insights for um, probable cause identification. Things like predictive correlations, this is what the, the normal behavior is, multivariate correlations, all sorts of machine learning can be applied here. And then going to more proactive, um, maturity level, if you like. So from smart incidents, avoid outages, get ahead of any problems before they come customer um, affecting. And all of these maturity levels, you know, they all follow the kind of the similar four stages of, uh, of the AI ops journey, if you like. So it's collecting your data, you know, provide the relevant um, data insights from KPIs, from events, from time series data, organize that data. So curate it, cleanse it, um, govern that data, if you like. Analyze the insights, you know, apply machine learning, apply AI to understand what are the insights we can gather from the data, and then infuse that um, AI into operational processes, into the, the closed loop, et cetera. And then as we um, talk about implementing AI ops, you know, it's important to look at this from a perspective of, you know, to implement intelligent operations, you know, you need to tie all the dots across all of the data. So you need to tie signals across structured data and you need to tie signals into and unstructured data from multiple sources like we have on the left hand side um, or up and down our stack here where we tie that data from the structured and the unstructured data together so that you know we correlate all of this data together right so we tie signals from from multiple sources and we can provide a clear view 
of anomalies, of clear view of linkages to sources for faster investigation, faster resolution. Um, and there's, there's, we can derive hidden insights from all of this data that we're collecting. You know, structured data, you know, things like events, time series data, KPIs, performance management data, but equally then unstructured data, things like logs, um, tickets, um, manuals, user manuals for different types of network functions, for example, coming from the third party vendors. You know, in order to leverage AI and sophisticated analytics, you know, we need to have a solid foundation like we have here with robust tooling covering all of this type of data, this is structured and unstructured data. And we need to understand the data. You know, all of this data together is really, really valuable for us in network operations. You know, but we need a real time, what's a ground truth, right? What is the state of the what is the state of my network for managing, you know, that ground truth can help us manage these complex applications, these complex services, these dynamic services that we're rolling out. Um, and you know, these tools allow us to you know, anticipate and address risks proactively, like that maturity curve in AI, right? You know, draw insights from more complex, unstructured data, get ahead of any problems, and all of this lends itself into you know towards automation. How can we automate this? You know, build in that foundation, enrich a bit topology data, enrich a bit AI, other sophisticated toolings, and then that can further reduce cost, further reduce risk. Um, you know, and that will you know allow us to have more sophisticated strategies which we can discuss um, next here. So designing networks for the cloud with AI and automation. So expanding what we just previously said, you know, a cloud native approach that encourages reuse is really important. You know, this demands intent based definitions that let the machine, if you like, handle the specifics. You know, a lot of this is about build to manage, you know, these automation models right up and down the stack. We talked about them earlier. And so these intent based models, you know, make these available not just for orchestrating and configuring and instantiating day one, day zero and day one of your network service, but make them available to assurance as well. So we can derive additional insights out there. So this set of predefined lifecycle types, these dependencies and relationships that we spoke to, um, and you know, have a, a set of uh, automation artifacts, if you like, a library of opinionated patterns um, that can address planned and more importantly, or equally as important, unplanned um, you know, changes in the network. So for service to, service restoration use cases, for example. You know, when assurance in AI is monitoring everything um, on, on the network at this stage. You know, as we see here, let's play this through a little bit. You know, we're looking to, you know, an infrastructure event can cause an error, for example, uh, cascading of errors. You know, assurance in AI help us to select the appropriate opinion of pattern that addresses for unplanned changes, there's a series of feedback loops back into the orchestration layer. Um, all the lights could be green, for example. Um, users could be complaining on social media, but everything in the NOF looks, looks good, right? Um, you know, we've got a client that has um, Twitter sentiment analysis overlaid on the NOC, and that helps with prioritization. You know, this is in, in countries who have very high social media, and you know, users are on all the time, right? So other customers have weather, weather analysis feeding into the NOC. So all of these insights can help with the prioritization, um, you know, of reconciling the actual state of the and the target state of the actual network cloud stacks across these different um, locations. Um, you know, so sense and respond to issues to opportunities for optimization. And it's worth reiterating here as well that you know this is all done with these model based approach without any upfront programming. So we're you know we're making the same automation models available for instantiation right up and down the stack from the NFI up through the network function, up through the network service layer, up to the enterprise application layer available for assurance and for AI monitoring. And in, in, along with that, then, you know, we require to leverage a cloud operating model. Um, and what, you know, we should understand that the, the need to, those techniques I spoke to a while ago, that they need to adopt this software development and management um, techniques. We also need to, you know, reorganize ourselves as well. We can't simply try to automate existing legacy processes. You know, these processes were designed for networks that were based on hardware, uh, for change in configuration, and you know, are, it's slow, right? And a lot of it's often manual, right? Network upgrades are measured in in months, right? Things like that. You know, existing or legacy processes and tooling, they've also got a high degree of manual touch. You know, that limits the ability to deliver on demand or self-correcting cloud-based services. You know, most operating centers, you know, require skilled technicians who could, could perform mainly manual tasks. So we now have this cloud networking automation platform and that we can embrace, 
you know, and learn from the IT and the DevOps world, DevOps movement, if you like, and enable complex network services to be designed, created, and continuously optimized across hybrid and across public private and across these distributed cloud lo locations. And this requires new tooling process and skills and culture, right? You know, if you think about what the, um, a day in the life of an ops person is in this type of cloud operating model, it's, you know, it's things like configure once, and then you can apply that multiple times in a cookie cutter fashion. You know, all changes in configuration management are through these declarative templates. You know, engineers don't need to tweak um, low level system configs directly. You know, drive your top level intent, and that will then drive the low level commands and you know, config changes, which lends itself into proactive um, closed loop control, that classic observe, heal, test. You know, and this network DevOps environment, it really enables a lean and effective way to manage and to, and to roll out faster implementation of function, functionality and, you know, but to manage the complexity of that environment and ultimately to improve customer experience. In summary then, or to wrap up, you know, we can talk, um, the, the move to this cloud native converged IT network cloud, you know, it can really be summed up into, you know, apply intelligent automation. And we're talking about this intent-based modeling and um, focus, which is focusing on exposing and delivering what a consumer wants or what a customer wants not exposing the technology kind of how do I how do I deliver this and then applying this to the operational changes is, you know adopt those new processes adopt those new operating model infuse with AI everywhere if you like you know we in IBM are helping clients to safely adopt this revolutionary approach um, to a software based network management you know we're allowing clients to to benefit from the what we've experienced for many years now from the already demonstrated benefits of cloud native you know learning from other industries where there is high innovation rate, where there is lower, you know, we've proven that we can lower the operational costs. You know, as an analyst said to me earlier in the week, you know, ultimately 5G is about the move to putting software at the center of the network. You know, and the approach then, our approach in IBM, we believe enables that open, open ecosystem for delivering that open hybrid network cloud. You know, if you want to find out more, you can take a look at the IBM virtual boot um, at the conference, or you can reach out to me directly. So thank you for your time today. Um, I hope you found this informative and available for any questions. So thank you.